When something goes wrong in the body, certain problems are easily treated through medications, surgery, or just helping the body heal itself. But not all places in the body are easily accessible through traditional methods. Consider the eye. Current treatments can be ineffective or invasive, especially for diseases in the back of the eye. What are some of the barriers and how might they be solved? To begin, there are several diseases that affect the back of the eye, where the light sensing retina sits. The retina is responsible for converting light into electrical signals, which are then sent along the optic nerve to the brain to interpret the image. The leading cause of vision loss in adults over 50 is age-related macular degeneration, where fatty deposits called drusen grow underneath the retina. Diabetic retinopathy is the leading cause of vision loss in American adults and involves damage to the blood vessels of the retina resulting from high blood sugar. As of now, there are three main approaches to delivering medication to the eye. First are topical medications, like eye drops or ointments. While these are effective in treating the anterior segment, or front, of the eye, they cannot diffuse all the way to the posterior or back segment. Additionally, only 20% of the dose stays in the eye, while the rest is washed away through blinking and tearing. The second available method is giving medications through the bloodstream. However, the volume of the eye in relationship to the rest of the body is so small that not much of the drug can reach it. Furthermore, the blood retinal barrier prevents drugs from reaching the back of the eye. Thirdly, drugs can be directly injected. This is the most common method for reaching the back of the eye today. But injections are highly invasive and can cause complications such as bleeding or structural damage, and they cannot be used repetitively over a short period of time. In November of 2018, scientists at the Max Planck Institute in Germany published a potential solution to delivering medications directly to the retina using tiny micropropeller nanorobots. These nanorobots move through the vitreous humor to the retina and have a precise shape, size, and composition. Each micropropeller has a silica head, a segment of magnetic nickel or iron, and a silica helix. The helical microstructures were created through glancing angle deposition, GLAD, a nanotechnology technique where a vaporized material is sprayed onto the micropropeller heads while they rotate at a specific angle, building up the tails in a helical shape. To make the nanorobots move, they are put in a rotating magnetic field. The nickel or iron segment is attracted to the magnetic field and causes the micropropeller to rotate, and the helical tail keeps it moving forwards. Although the vitreous humor is 99% water, it is jelly-like in consistency and contains a mesh of collagen and other proteins, approximately 500 nanometers wide. The micropropeller must be small enough to fit through this mesh work, but big enough to move quickly and carry potential drugs. Therefore, the scientists optimized the micropropeller size with a 500 nanometer head and a 2 micrometer tail, making them 200 times smaller than the width of a human hair. The nanorobots also must glide cleanly through the eye without sticking to its surroundings. To achieve this, scientists cover the micropropellers in perfluorocarbons, highly hydrophobic molecules consisting of carbon and fluorine. A second layer of perfluorocarbon liquid was then added, which fused with the first layer to create a highly slippery surface that greatly reduces adhesion in the eye. This slippery coating was inspired by the carnivorous Nepenthes pitcher plant, which uses a similar waxy substance to trap insects. Scientists then fluorescently labeled the micropropellers so they could track their movement, and injected them into the center of a pig eye. After 30 minutes in the magnetic field, the micropropellers reached the target in the back of the eye, spreading an area of diameter 6 millimeters, about the size of a pencil eraser. The injected solution also had a diameter of 6 millimeters, indicating that the particles are highly directable. They can be focused to a particular area of the retina. The particles also traveled approximately 10 times faster than what passive diffusion could achieve. In the future, these nanorobots could accurately and non-invasively deliver drugs to the back of the eye. The micropropellers could also be altered to travel through other biological tissues. Nanoparticles are additionally being tested in areas such as the stomach and blood, and as a whole, this research shows the promise of nanotechnology in disease treatment.